In this lecture, I'd like to go through the essentials of how to craft a great blog post. There's no magic formula here. You have to experiment and see what works for you, but there are a few things I want you to consider when you're creating new content. The first thing is your audience. Think about who you're trying to reach with your content and what they're looking for. What kinds of things do they want to know about? What types of content resonate with them? We'll talk about getting to know your target audience in a little more detail in the next lecture. Next is your topic. This is pretty straightforward. Decide what the post is going to cover and what its purpose is and make sure everything else is centered around that. Every post should serve one particular purpose. If you try to do too many things with a single post, you may end up diluting the value for your readers. So focus on one thing at a time. Your title is important because it's the first thing people see and it entices the reader to click when they see your post on search engines or social media. It should be something relatively short, ideally less than 55 characters if you want it all to show up on Google, but it should also be catchy and unique. Spend some time on your post titles because they can make or break your first impressions. Next we have the opening line, the very first sentence or paragraph of your post. This is where you have to continue to build interest. You've already captured people with the title, but at this point they're trying to see if your post is actually worth the time it takes to read it. So grab their attention with an engaging first line and then follow through with great content. In the 21st century, attention spans are shorter than ever. And a fact of life for bloggers is that many visitors don't read our content so much as they scan it. So it's a good idea to cater to that demographic by formatting your posts and making them easy to skim while still providing plenty of substance. What that means is your post shouldn't just be a big wall of text. You can use subheadings, images, videos, bullet point lists, things like that to break up your prose and make it a little more digestible. You can also highlight important points with bold or italicized text, but try to use those sparingly. How long is the ideal blog post? I've seen arguments and data on both sides of this debate, so my answer to the question is this. As long as it needs to be. I've written posts under 500 words that went on to generate tens of thousands of page views just because they provided value and gave people exactly what they were looking for. On the other hand, I've also had success with longer content, say two to 4,000 words, because it dives deep and offers more information than my competitors. There is some evidence that Google favors longer content when it comes to search rankings, but it has to be good content. Don't add fluff to increase your word count like you would on a college paper or something. Just think about how you can pack as much value into your posts as possible. You'll notice the recurring theme here is it's not about word count, it's about the amount of value you can provide. And finally, it's a good idea to have a call to action at the end of your posts, which is where you direct the reader to take the next step. What this looks like depends on your particular goals. It could be asking them to leave a comment or join your email list or check out a product, something like that. Whatever the case, if they've made it to the end of your post, they're already engaged with your content. So you should take that opportunity to keep them engaged. So that's it. You're now well on your way to writing some epic blog posts. Next, we'll talk about how to get to know your target audience and come up with content ideas that they will love.